we'll come back for two more examples of determining limits using L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule allows us to use derivatives to evaluate limits involving indeterminate forms. The most common indeterminate form is zero divided by zero, but these are also indeterminate forms. It is important to remember that we can only apply L'Hopital's rule if the limit involves an indeterminate form. So if this limit here involves one of these indeterminate forms, this is equal to the limit as x approaches c of f prime of x divided by g prime of x, which means we can take the derivative of the numerator and denominator to determine this limit of indeterminate form. So looking at our first example, we have the limit as x approaches zero of sine 3x divided by sine 4x. Notice as x approaches zero, both the numerator and denominator approach zero, so we do have an indeterminate form, and therefore we can apply L'Hopital's rule. But before we do this, let's take a look at the graph of this quotient function. Here's the graph of our quotient function. Notice as x approaches zero from the right, and from the left, we can tell the limit does exist even though the function is undefined at x equals zero. So let's use L'Hopital's rule to determine what this function value is that we're approaching. So this limit is equal to the limit as x approaches zero of the derivative of sine three x divided by the derivative of sine four x. Notice how our two functions are composite functions, where three x and four x are the inner functions. So we'll use this derivative formula here, which includes the chain rule, where u is the inner function, which means the derivative of sine three x is equal to cosine three x times the derivative of three x, which is three, and the derivative of sine four x is equal to cosine four x, times the derivative of four x, which is four. And because this quotient function is continuous around x equals zero, we can now determine this limit using direct substitution. So if we substitute zero for x, we go ahead and put this three first. We'd have three times cosine of three times zero is zero. In the denominator, we can put the four first, and we'd have four times cosine four times zero, or cosine zero. Well, cosine zero over cosine zero simplifies to one, therefore our limit is equal to three-fourths. So if we go back and take a look at the graph of the quotient function, notice how it does appear graphically that we are approaching the function value of three-fourths, even though we have a hole here. Now looking at our second example, we have the limit as x approaches zero of sine two x divided by tangent eight x, and again, as x approaches zero, both the numerator and denominator are approaching zero, so we do have an indeterminate form, and therefore we can apply L'Hopital's rule. It's important to remember that we can only apply L'Hopital's rule when the limit involves an indeterminate form. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches zero of the derivative of sine two x divided by the derivative of tangent eight x. Again, notice in both cases we'll have to apply the chain rule. The derivative of sine two x is equal to cosine two x times two. The derivative of tangent eight x is gonna be equal to secant squared eight x times eight. This quotient function is continuous around x equals zero, and therefore we can find this limit again by performing direct substitution. So in the numerator we would have two times cosine two times zero or zero. The denominator would be eight times secant squared eight times zero, which is zero. Well cosine zero is equal to one, and secant zero would be the reciprocal of cosine zero, so secant zero is also equal to one. So we actually have two times one divided by eight times one squared, which would be two eighths or one fourth. Okay, this will do it for this video. I think we'll look at two more examples of L'Hopital's rule in the next video.